Okay, I forgot to change the transition, and that uh, was weird. But anyways, hello everyone, my name is MJ Vilches, and yeah, this is part two of designing Luxa using Grease Pencil. And Grease Pencil is something that I'm going to be using in every design or 2D thing that I'm going to be making from now on, because I just really love uh, the how, how, you know, the brush or drawing in it feels. I really love it. So, yeah, without further ado... Let's get to it. Yeah, here is our initial stage, our like base stage for uh, Luke's design. And yeah, in this part, we are going to uh, design her clothes. And for her clothes, there's going to be like certain situations where, of course, her clothes will will change depending on what activity she's currently doing. And for episode 2, for E-02 of the Underland Project, she will be wearing um, a uniform. It's a uniform for the Regalian Bond Ball. So yeah, the, Rega the Regalian Bond Ball is just something, it's a name that I'm actually just decided. I've decided in my head what to call that game they were playing uh, during the second chapter of the book. From chapters 2 to 4 of the book, Gregor the Overlander. They played a ball game there. There's not much about it. The, uh, the rules are not shared. Everything. So I decided to create those rules in my head. I haven't really put them on paper yet. But I have ideas about it. And one of the things that I've decided is that it will be called Bond Ball. Because uh, it's a game that can only be played by people who are bonded to a bat. That's probably uh, that's one of the ways you can get in. It's a game for bonds. And uh, if it's going to be an actual sport, that's like one of the requirements. You, you gotta have a bond. You gotta, be, you gotta be human and bonded to a bat. Or a bat bonded to a human to participate. And yeah, uh, there's a whole lot of things about it that I've decided on. And uh, I had a Paul go where I was gonna make also... Uh, I was gonna make a sports game and not an interactive comic. Uh... I had a poll going where I have I had I had fans from Discord, Reddit, and Tumblr to vote uh, which one they'd want to see, and well, interactive comic one. But since I had the idea of creating a sports game, uh, the the idea of how the system and everything about the the ball game just kind of came into fruition in my head. Because that's what happens when I start a project; suddenly ideas will emerge, will grow. But, but since we're working on an interactive comic, we don't have to worry about that. I don't have to go in-depth about that. We just have to take uh, the idea that I have for the uh, uniform. So, yeah. For the uniform, my idea is actually something like this. Let's start. <laughs> Let's start designing it. So, I'm just going to go lock everything for Luxus layer here. Luxus is going to have a different layer. I actually started, I mean, in the, on the previous part, if you watched it, I started working on a clothes, but I, you know, deleted it. We don't need it. I'm going to rename this Regalian Bond Ball Uniform. Because <clears throat> that's the name of the game that I decided to, uh, you know, that's the game. That's the name of the game that I decided will be the name of the game. But anyways, yeah. We are going to have a different grease pencil object for the Bond Ball. Which I'm pretty sure it's located. It's empty for now, but if we look at the origin, it's the same as Luke's ref. Which is important. <clears throat> so yeah. So, let's go and do some sketches first before we put it... On our Luke's of reference, I'm gonna do it right here. And uh, sketch con concept sketch, not exactly sure what to call these. But for the Regalian Bond Ball uniform, what I want to do is I want let me just add some materials here that are actually great materials. I'm gonna get black and I gotta get pencil here 
So the Regalian Bond Ball, what I plan to do is, is for the, for the like interior. I'm gonna increase the size for this, for now. For the interior, I this I wanted to do that sleeveless shirt because I want I don't want Luxa or Luxa or anyone actually playing that game wouldn't want a long sleeve. A long sleeve would really would make it difficult for them to you know move mobility will be like a reduced with a long sleeve so i'm gonna go with like you know the usual type of wear that athletes wear where they're, it's a sleeveless uh you know it's a sleeveless outfit because it's you know it provides mo more mobility and you know i think it's because airflow or something it just reduces the amount of like weight or airflow or whatever that one that that one doesn't exactly need to perform in this sports events. So it's going to be uh, this is a this is a clothing that is unique to the Regalians to the Underlanders because they do have clothes where they made the giant spiders make. So they make trades with the giant spiders, the spinners, and the spinners makes their clothes. And for the inner, this is the inner layer of the uh, uniform, a sleeveless shirt. So that's a sleeveless shirt. And then there's going to be, this is for the upper half of the body. And they are going to be wearing a vest, a leather vest. That will look. They're gonna be wearing a leather vest that would look kind of like this. So that's just going to be a leather vest. And can be attached by using that uh, some hook. Hooking like a button, just like a thread, and then there's like a button here where they can just attach it, like so. And this is kind of like they, uh, uh, this is probably like a common thing for them. And then I might actually create like a, like something for their sleeve here. A sleeve guard you know it's you also want to make this a bit a bit of a unique thing so it's going to be like a sleeve guard right here attached to like the shoulder part right there just protecting their arm and that's pretty much it for the uh, upper half for the lower half they got there's got to be a way to like determine their team So that's something that we're also going to work on. For the back of this leather, maybe we can add that as well. But that won't be visible for Luxa since her hair is really long. So this is pretty much straightforward. The back of this will be just have the neck higher. So I don't need to draw that. The back of this. We'll have the logo right here. And the system that I have for the game, actually, for the Regalian Bond Ball, for the Bond Ball, is that it's a five man per team. And there's going to be two warriors. Two warriors. It's going to be like five, five men per team. This one is the defender. Which will defend their like goal. This one are the guards, which will guard our warriors, the two warriors, the two assaults. We can call this assaults. We have assaults. So the assaults are the ones who will hold the ball. They're the ones who who are only 
if they if they throw the ball to the to the hoop of the of the enemy, which I have, I've decided to be to look like kind of like this. So I do I do have like a system for like the game already made. It's like a tube. It's like a it's like a trumpet. And you shoot the ball right there, it falls, and then they can just easily retrieve it again. So we have two assaults, two guards, one defender. That's like my plan for the game. For the system. And I will have to create symbols for each of those roles. So the... Yeah, the, the symbols will be like situated on the uniforms, like right here right here and this I guess this uniform is one of those things that indicates you know which is which so there's going to be the, uh, the logos will determine if they're a guard a defender or an assault so I'm going to have to create a symbols for each of those because that's gonna be a big thing when uh, creating these clothes this is the regalian bond ball uniform But yeah, that's it for the upper half. I'm just really planning things here before putting it on the reference and having like a finalized version of it. Yeah. Uh, for the lower half, it's going to be... They're going to have that garment again. Like so with a belt they'd have a belt but how would their belt look like will it be like a belt tell you what it would probably exactly like how belts look because I'm pretty sure belts already existed on the 1600s I'm gonna have to google this <clears throat> excuse me because that's what are belts in 1600s How do belts look in 1600s? I'm pretty sure belts, like their usual belt looks today. I mean, not really how usually it. The, the belts that has like a. It's kind of like this. There's the metal part, and then connected to the leather, and there's like a metal part right there and you can hook that there's holes in you know that kind of type of belt because there, there are belts that exist that uh, that doesn't look like that there are belts that has just these two bars like this and you just slip the uh, you know it's kind of like if you slip through the thing to tighten it but we're gonna use the ones with like that that line thing. That metal. I don't know what to call it, <laughs> really. But yeah. So the lower half for this, the first layer will be something that looks like this. So it's a uh, it's like just below the knee, but not go all the way. Should I make it like that? Because that's, that's kind of how it looks from the book. But maybe I could just go do it properly and make that a line instead of a saw design. So this is like the lower half. Um, The knee should be like right around here. And there's still room for like the sheen to come out like that. And they don't really need sheen guards for this, since they're gonna be on a bat. The bats will be, uh... Now, now I'm also considering whether to add, uh... Something, like clothing for the bats during these games. But, uh, yeah, I guess that's good for now. I kinda wanna add, like, a cape for their, for their butt. Or something. 
that will also be an indicator of what they are, what their role is. That's going to be the second layer. It's going to be like a cape thing. That, that will flow like a flag behind them when they fly. But that's just another thing that we need to think, of, think about, isn't it? And Luxa, pretty sure Luxa, since she's got a very long hair, she's tucking it inside like the belt loop on the on her back so it doesn't like fly around uncontrollably so i'm just gonna go and uh open up a pdf copy of the i do have the books with me like i bought them years ago but i don't really want to take them off the shelf right now so i'm just gonna go and open this pdf copy and uh the hair was woven in an intricate braid down her back and was stuck into a belt at her waist so yeah there we go that's how it looks her her hair she tucks it on a belt at her waist so she's probably so she, since she can't really reach the back she's probably tucking it right at the side we right here at a belt on her waist or maybe she's got like its very own belt for her hair. Which she probably finds to be really inconvenient. Because Luke says more of a practical queen and uh, later in the book, spoiler alert, she gets her hair cut. Like, to a boy cut. Like very close to the head cut. Because she said it, long locks are dangerous for battle. So she had it cut. For practical reasons. And I'm going to actually emphasize that on episode 5 while they're battling. Because she still will have a long hair there. And when she performs a, a, like an upside down attack there. And then goes back up, the hair would like cover up her face. I'm going to add something like that for episode 5. Where the hair covers up her face. <laughs> and that's going to make her... That's going to like even more... Convince her that long locks are dangerous in battle and it would not be safe if she will if she goes on a quest and goes out having a long hair So yeah, anyways, we're gonna continue here. This is going to be Something that they tie up their waist like a flag of some sorts Something like that, that will also have their symbol on it. Or maybe this is their like team, team, team flag. This determines what team they are. It's going to be just a different color. So it's going to be red team, blue team. So it's going to be, you know, a, col a, a flag, a, a color, a, probably a red or blue color flag. That will, they will tie up their waist to, to, you know, just to help the referee determine which team they are. Or help themselves to determine whose team is who so that's pretty much what i think would be the regalian bond ball uniform and later on i'm going to design maybe very quickly here i'm going to, like i said there are there's one defender so if it's a defender it's a shield the symbol of a shield on them the defender symbol So that's Defender. And then we have two guards. Then again, guards also... Huh. This is a... Guard is also kind of... It's also a shield. Tell you what, Defender and Guard are really close. I'm probably going to change the name from Defender to, uh... Keep, uh, Goalkeeper. But it, it, it can also be that, Goalkeeper. Since that's how it works as well. I mean, that's also how it is in most games. 
I guess I'm gonna go with keeper. This is a keeper. And their symbol will be the shield that can move it to the guards. Keeper symbol will be What would be the keeper symbol? Keeper, keeper, keeper. I guess I'm gonna go. I don't want to go with a complicated design for each of their logos. So maybe a keeper will be just a ring, a circle like that. And this is a guard or a defender, which protects the uh, the assault. So I want to keep things simple. I don't want it complicated for the designs for the regalians. I don't want like intricate stuff like that because i'm pretty sure they won't have the luxury or time to or maybe you know for the f for the fun of it but yeah i think most of their patience goes to like the sculpture and stuff but for the purposes of like just m me i guess this is just me i'm gonna go and uh go for like a simpler design for each of the logos so an assault would be, could be a sword, but they're not really using swords to fight. I guess I'm going to go with a circle for, for assault to look like the bond ball. So an assault, just a circle, guard, shield, keeper, a ring. Yeah, that works. And Luxa, of course, is an assault. She doesn't want to be guarding anyone. Whoa, what? I have this on mirrored mode? Apparently I do. I can delete that later. But yeah, now that we have like the idea down, we can start applying it. But before that, I'm going to check the dogs because they're barking at something. I'll be back. Once again, they're barking at another dog outside. If you can hear them, ignore them. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I should be back in screen right now. Okay, let's keep going. Now I'm going to go and uh, apply this. Apply our ideas, so the things that we've planned here on the reference. So now I'm going to go lock this layer in the grease pencil and create a new one. This is going to be Regalian Bond Ball, RBB. RBB. Wait, what am I doing? RBB. Shirt. RBB first layer. Uniform 1. Just Uniform 1. Sketch. Okay then. Oh boy. Dogs really are barking. Probably a dog or something. Tell you what, I'm gonna check. Because I can't really see what they're barking at. It's outside. And they're barking. at the, Looking at the, the ground. So it could be a cat. Okay, probably the cat's done tormenting them. Anyways, let's go. I am going to go and uh, start with a sketch of the first layer. So this is going to be a sleeveless shirt. It goes right here. Let 
me just do this. Looks like this. And then goes here. Because this is what Lux is going to be wearing for episode 2. There's going to be a, other dresses for her. But for now, we're going to take our time designing the ones that she's actually going to be using. For the act for the con for the thing that we're actually making. So he's gonna go like this. So that's the uh first part. Upper half of the uniform. Now we go belt the belt usually goes right to our waist so I have to go the belt usually goes right here so belt right there So it's a pants. Probably gonna create that line later when I activated. I mean, I applied the uh, the mirror modifier. And then goes like this. Oh yeah, I forgot to also include the sandals, but we're gonna be doing that design here. It's going to be sandals, of course. So like so. They won't have sheen guards, but their sandals would look... Let me go back to the concept sketch here. For the sandals, there's going to be... A ring right on the top of the foot, on the leg. And it's got to be a belt, like right here. And then there's a back part, like so. Also a side part right here. Which then connects a bunch of stuff in the middle here. I could go a bit more intricate on the sandals, but that might not be consistent with the design of the other parts of their costume there. Sandals goes like this. So I'm just kind of roughly... Maybe like that. You can apply it here. Because I think I can see it more here because we have a front view and a side view. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go to Luxa Ref here. Object. Actually, I need to go back to object mode. Regalian. Bond ball object mode viewport display it's not the viewport display is it I think what I can do actually is something like this I 
Okay, I have the clothes slightly in front of this, of Luxa here. But I'm gonna go bring that out one layer. And then I'm gonna create a new grease pencil object. Blank. And then move this one layer forward, right, like that. Then I'm just going to grab, or maybe create a new material, actually. Uh, let's call it cover, I guess. I'm going to make it white or, or gray. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a rectangle like this. So as you can see, it kind of covers up uh, Luxa. I'm also going to go back here and reduce the opacity of this. So we can really reduce the visibility of Luxa here. And clearly see the clothes. There we go. I'm gonna go back to the Regan Bond Ball and keep drawing. So we have that. Now we can keep going. So yeah. Sandals right there. I think for the sandals, I want to start with the side view first. No. So, sandal goes like this. And there's going to be another right here. It's got to look weird because that it's clearly uh, described in the book that this sandal looks nothing like how the sandals that looks in the overland like so No intricate. I mean, is there even like fashion designers in Regalia? Do they even have the that kind of luxury being a war-torn city where most of their resources are really just, you know, most of the resources are really just to aid the war effort. It's spent to aid the war effort. Going to be something like this. This connects to there. So it's going to be like a metal thing that's connecting these letters here. So this is made of leather. It's got to be something that can also be created in real life. The side, protecting the side right there, which will also have a lining right here. Going all the way around, which also at the back. I probably should have created a back part like a back angle for Luxa here as well which can easily be remedied but yeah there's the sandal weird sandal 
But it's gotta be also something that can easily be worn. Taken off and worn again. Gotta be not too uh, complicated because they need to be able to dress up quick for battle. It's gotta be one of the factors that should always be important. They shouldn't have too intricate of a dress so to a point where it takes so much time to dress up. And especially during quests, they wouldn't want something that will be a pain in the butt to actually wear while traveling. It's gotta be light, minimal, no, nothing that obstructs a mobility. That's kind of one of the things. And yeah, when designing clothes for characters, I think it's important to take note of all those things. To have like a bit of a purpose, to, to really have a purpose for each of their, of the things that they put in their body. Because, you know, story is always king. And it's gotta, you know, it, things should be aligned to what the story is, to how how they really to how useful they should be story wise can't design something that just doesn't work or doesn't work story wise let's see then Okay, there we go. Now, as I said, I could still, uh, I still have, uh, the things here will probably change when, uh, modeling them in 3D, but for the most part, I'm actually really satisfied with how things look here. Let's also do the side view version of this what did i move what happened oh we're not in front view anymore it's so difficult to like reach the keyboard in my setup here but yeah as i said make do with what we have now let's see i am going to copy the neckline here Oh crap, did I? Oh man. Apparently, I drew all that inside the concept layer. Need to move that back there. There we go. Just gonna grab. I'm gonna grab this side. Mirror modifier is still on, so. Need to grab like the neck area, which should be right on top of the uh, clavicle here. And I can just I can just draw drag this thing and have it go like this, and draw the rest. So up to the back. The sleeve goes right here. And the belt area, I will need to copy it as well. It's this side. Control L, Shift D, X. Because they need to be located directly straight. Hmm. The belt's supposed to be situated right on top, like right here, around right this area. So we need to change that. We're going to 
change that. I'm just gonna delete this. I'm also gonna delete this part right here. That needs to be repeated. And the belt should be right just right up the butt. Because that's I think Yeah, that's where belt should be. Like up the waist, right like right here. Yeah, yeah, like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a line here for guidance. Tell you what, make it perfect. A perfect line right here. Oh, this is Although this is drawn in like a 3D way, so I guess imperfection can be forgiven here. So belt right up here. Just gonna do a rough belt like look there. And then the clothes creases right around this area. And there's going to be like uh, the upper part of the pants. Like here, right here. And Luxa would be tucking her braid like to the side of her waist right here on her right. I mean on her left. Pretty sure she's right handed. Not not exactly stated in the books. But yeah. That works. And then So I have to create a space between her like body and the clothes. Because that's also how I'm going to be modeling them later on in 3D. Going to help a lot when doing cloth simulation. Then again, this is an interactive comic. Oh, but then again, I also plan to animate Luxa actually. Like really 3D animate. Like once I'm done with every character, I always create a, a short animation of each of the character to do some animation tests and also to showcase them, which will become like a fan mode video. But yeah, there we go. Now I just need to copy this belt, specifically the middle area right here. Something like that, because that's supposed to exist right there. I'm just gonna rotate this. Okay, there's the belt area. So I'm actually learning a bunch of stuff here while doing this. So something like that. And then upper shirt should crease right around here. And connect it right there. There we go. Kind of liking that. Really liking that. So that's the first layer of our uniform. Regalian Bond Ball uniform, also Luke's uh, outfit, but that's just, yeah, the first layer. And we're gonna actually color that, or finalize that right now. Maybe not, maybe I'll just lock this and create the second layer. So I'm gonna go RBB. It's like we're in caps lock. RBB underscore uniform 2. Sketch. So now for the uniform two, it's going to be this one right here, which will have her logo. I really need to add another angle for Luxa here for the back part, because I didn't consider that I'll be needing it, and now I regret it. 
Anyways, I'm gonna go start working on that second layer of our of the uniform. It's going to be like a thicker garment, thicker. It's a leather. It's made of leather. Something like that. I think yes, it's supposed to fall straight. Straight like so. And covers. That area. It's a vest, basically. It just goes up to here. Like how vests go. Like so. I'll need to copy this, this area right here. Copied it right there. I also need to copy this area so I have a reference to where they are. So this goes like that. So vest will actually like compress the clothes closer to the body. So there's going to be creases and stuff right there. I'm just not going to include that right here for now. As I said, there's going to be so many changes to its like where things are going to be when modeling in 3D. So yeah, vest, like here. Might actually add like the the logo for the uh, for their role, like right on their chest, like on the right side, right here or left side, because that's how usually is with the logo is right now. Or was it the right side? Like a pocket. Now let's go with the uh, second layer. Which is the flag. I'm kind of thinking of not including it at this point. So there's just going to be like a leather... So it's attached right there. It's like, it's just like a, a flap, like right here. And on that flap, kind of like a, a shoulder guard. Like a circular shoulder guard is located. Attached to like a leather, to the that part right there shoulder guard will be something like this in in, in radius it will also have their logo I mean uh, their uh, role uh, painted on it Hmm, let's see. I'm trying to figure out how I can add this flag thing. I do not like covering up the belt like that. It's the belts. Yeah, the belt's gonna be a belt. Held in place like this. So 
So... Yeah, I can apply this now, I think. I can apply the uh, modifier. Let's go to object mode first. There we go. Now I can add all the other details. Oh crap. I need those to be on uniform one. Move it, uniform one. And lock this for a while. Need to make the changes on uniform one here. So there's the belt, like the end of the belt. Then that lining. Like so. There's going to also be a line from the clothes right here. But then again, these are clothes made by the spinners. They don't sue. They can just they can just craft these clothes in the shape. In this shape. You don't need to like it doesn't need to be cut to a certain certain shape and then be sued later on. They can just immediately create clothes. They spin it. Or do the regalians actually still craft the clothes? They only need like the then again. Do needles work on? It might actually be... That ca that can't be the case because when on book one, when Gregor needed some diapers, they just ordered some from the spin because there were prisoners of the spinners at that moment. And they're not really, they're, they're not really like being tormented or being antagonized by the spinners. Only they, they're only keeping them there while deciding what they're going to do with the humans. So they can actually ask for water or other things and they ask for a diaper or catch cloth as what they call it and they the spiders just gave gave them the catch cloth re cloths ready made so with that in mind i'm pretty sure that the, the clothes they receive the regalians the regalians the clothes they receive are ready made they don't have to make it themselves So these garments that are created by these spiders won't have stitch lines since spiders won't be stitching them they're they're just going to be spinning them into that shape right away like into this shape there's no going there's not going to be any garment lines or whatever but I guess for design purposes because it does add more to our simple design I'm just going to add that line Maybe they're also going to be following some principles in like creating clothing from humans that they're going to like spin it in this way anyway. I don't know, but I'm going to do it like that. So we have that right there. Now for the uniform two, I need this one is human crafted the uniform like the vests. They're going to have like buttons here, metal buttons, and there's like a going to be like a thread that you can hook into here. So it's just going to be four of these right here, and then you just kind of hook this, so it looks like like this. And you hook it onto the bottom. That's, that's the idea. So I'm just really designing her clothes here 
for episode two. Later on, we're gonna be designing other, like, regalian clothing. There's going to be, like, a common clothing for the regalians. And it depends on their status, whether they're royalty, a commoner, all that things. So we have that. And that is good. Let's see. Another part of the clothing, clothing here. Hmm. Maybe instead of a flag, that's gonna be really annoying. It's gotta be something that they can just tuck into their, or tie into something. Hmm. How shall we do this? Cause Luxa will be tucking up, tucking her. It's going to be like a special belt for her hair, like right here. Or not even a belt. It's going to be like a thread that she can just easily tie up her hair on that spot. Okay, then. Tell you what, I'm gonna worry about that, that other part, that, that flag thing right there later, maybe. Because I don't like covering up the belt. And that's what that thing is gonna do. It's gonna cover up the belt. Or maybe I can just do a... It's going to be right on top, right here. Yeah, it will really cover up the belt, wouldn't it? It's going to be tied up right here. I don't want it to be this. I don't want it to cover up the belt. Because the belt's going to be looking good and stuff. It's something that I really don't want to cover up. So let's go and control L. Control. Control L. Delete this. And then I guess it's going to be something that they also include. Like tucked in on the like the right side of their belt, like at the back. Like, consider this the right side. That, there's going to be a piece of cloth that just hangs right here. To determine their, their team. Like, attached to the, to the belt. Later on. Yeah. That can be the case. Okay, okay. We got this. Now I'm gonna do... I'm gonna go add some lines maybe, or... Hmm... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go uh, do the inking process here. To make it clearer. And everything. RBB. Uniform 1. Line. So I'm gonna turn off uniform two for now. And go with the first layer of the uniform right here. So to do this, do I want to do it with the mirror on? I don't want to. Let's just go change to the pen mode now and I can just easily bend like this and 
just align it. There we go. I actually need to reduce the opacity of the sketch here. So I can see it. I can see the lines. Just curve that right there. Same goes right here. The mirror modifier might be easier, but it will duplicate a ton of stuff. I don't want that. It's going to be a bit loose though, so I'm gonna have to go and scale this down a bit. Or move this down. So we're just going to do the line here. It's so like as I said, I want a simple design for the uh for the clothes, at least for the inner garment. Oh what? What was that? What? Okay, that's uh weird. What's happening here? Blender broken for us or something, or I'm not on the front orthographic view. That's why it's doing some weird things. Yeah, pretty much the reason. So now we're gonna go and what happened? Oh, since we're not in the orthographic view back then. How long have I not been in the orthographic view? Oh crap. That's not, that doesn't bode well for us, doesn't it? I'm going to have to move things again here because uh, apparently we have failed to set things right on our view here. Mm, I guess that's fine. Gotta make sure I close this properly. So that later, when we do the fills, it would be easier. So for the sides of the shirt, I'll just go and draw it. Add a bit of a... Uh, add some imperfection in there, you know. Same goes for this part right here. There you go. Then the belt area. So I'm not going to be too perfect here. Too, you know, too meticulous. Because these areas can easily be more meticulous meticulous <laughs> later. Because on the 3D version, there's going to be mirror modifier on. I only need to work on one side. I just have to pick which side's the best and use that. But I can also just not follow everything and just use it as a reference and make some tweaks while, while doing the 3D version of this. So we'll get it. We'll, we'll, we'll get. We'll get it. We'll get it. There we go. The belt, the metal area. Regulians, I think, are really. Will they design? Will they carve something on the belt metals? Possibly. Possibly. But yeah, these uniforms are kind of like standard in the arena. But Luxa must have her own. Her, her own, like, very own uniform made for, for her. So 
some parts of this might have like some intricacies to it like uh, the belt will have carvings on it etc so I'm just gonna go and draw this roughly here copying that I mean following the sketch for the lines of the belt area which will be done in a few seconds Se seconds there we go so for the uh, pants I'm going to have to uh, rely on the curve tools here I will however draw this part There you go. Now I'm going to go do this. Probably need to control space this so we have more space to work on here. I'll just drag that right there. Tab. Not even gonna bother. Wait, wait, wait. I should probably curve that. But yeah. So I'm just gonna curve this up right here. Might just actually duplicate that for the other side but let me just connect this right here make sure there's no gaps so that it would be easy to do the fill later on there we go and then more curves So I'm just gonna finalize, I mean, I'm, this is more, as I said, a reference. And I don't want to be too lazy about adding the lines here so that it'd be easier to, yeah, you know, use it as a reference later on and there's no confusion. And things like that. Because I often find it that if I just rely on the sketch later on when I model it, I suddenly lose details that I would have needed if I wasn't lazy and actually went beyond just sketching and actually added the lines. Dang it. Why do you keep changing? I keep pressing the change view thing on the tablet. I mean the middle mouse, equivalent to the middle mouse button. I could probably just go drag it all the way down there. And then uh, use edit mode to edit it further. Following the sketch, of course. Here we go. All I need to do now for the other side is uh, just call control L this shift D s x negative one and move it on the x-axis there we go we have the other side without having to draw the other side don't press f press g otherwise it makes a new edge and there we go that's for the front view now we go side view Just do something like this. And then. Follow our sketch. And that should do it for that side. Now let's go. This side. Maybe I can go all the way right there. Edit that in edit mode to edit it further. And there we go. Now for this part. like so and edit edit further on edit mode 
So it's just going to be like a repeating process as usual. But it is pretty easy to add inks, inking for when using grease pencil because of how you can easily manipulate the lines like this. Really love it. And for the rest, I can just draw. So most of the task really is just doing this. I mean, we spent some time uh, planning stuff, of course. This is going to be tricky right here. Like doing it. Yeah, this is going to be tricky. Like filling up this area right here, which is covered by the arms. Going to have a... Tell you what, it's fine. It's fine. Don't do we don't need to worry. It's extra work, but not that much of a work, so we don't need to be too we don't need to listen to our lazy self all the time when something becomes uncomfortable. To you know, just a little bit discomfort. So that's that, and then there's going to be the the end of the belt. Just gonna put it like right here. No, not control. Don't press that, please. Now we can use our curve tool for the rest. I'm even gonna bother really following the sketch here that because we can always edit in edit mode and use the mouse for this because it's easier to control with the middle mouse button and stuff there we go there we go There we go. There we go. So you're really just moving lines. At least for the inking air inking uh inking process. Really want to be able to just fill this up qu quickly later on, but I'm pretty sure that's not going to be the case since we do have those parts that's under the arm. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to go draw this line right here. Okay, that's the first layer. Now let's go and also include the ink for the next layer. So RBB uniform two dash line, not loan line. No, no, no line. Thank you. And we are going to go in the line things up not really line things up but you know make a line subline just saying a bunch of stupid things don't mind me and that goes there this would be easier I think I hope Ok, 
curved tool maybe not too curved though like that is fine I can just duplicate that later on for the other side let me just work on the, this side first oh yeah I forgot there's got to be like metal I don't, I'm not sure what they're called but you know something that will hold this and this together something metallic like right here It's gonna hold the vest and this one, this leather part and this part right here together. Just gonna go and draw this part right here. Or maybe let's go with the line. Enter that. Thank you. Control L. Attach that to the top right there, maybe. I'm going to have to delete some stuff right here. Tell you what, let's use a circle right here. I'll deal with that later actually need to use that circle right here control L because that will hold that together and then let's add this circle I mean this part right here That should be good. Now the other side, I mean the part below, right here. Do this. And we got something like that. Tell you what, I'm just gonna grab a part right here to achieve something like that, maybe. Now for the shoulder area. I'm gonna use this tool right here. Do something like this. Make sure that's attached right there. I'm gonna control L shift D for the top area right here. And that's it. that about does it. Now I can draw this side, this part right here. This is a metal thing connecting this thing up here. That's like the shoulder guard that sh also shows your the role in the team. So there you go. Yeah, now I can just go grab all of that, shift D, S, X, negative 1, G, X, and move it right to the other side. Easy peasy. There you go. Let me move it a bit. Nice. Really liking that. And the button things. Control L. 
Shift, Shift D. Thank you. Shift D. Thank you. And the last Shift D. Thank you. What I can do for this middle part right here that's not meeting each other nicely? So can S X and do that. Oh, scale it on the x-axis. Scale it down on the x-axis. And this is going to be like a tiny rope situation. Just gonna go something like that. And It's gonna be duplicated a bunch of a bunch of times, so don't have to worry about how it really looks. Right here on the concept stage or the reference stage, at least, because uh, I don't really need to pass this on to a, no, I'm another modeler. I've been modeling these things myself, so I'm kind of leaving other things not included because I already have them in my head. I don't need to like really explain it to someone to do what I have in my head because I'm doing it myself so there we go that's the vest the team vest and now let's go and move on to the other to the side view I'm gonna go with a line a perfect line right here And just you know tweak it and curve right here these things would be easy to model pretty sure just gonna shift the this up here and edit it and put this line right here and delete that same for this one line some lines to the arm delete wait. delete the others I deleted the stroke above as well I am stupid oh well guess an opportunity to, for us to actually do this Oh well. There we go. There we go. Now for the for this part right here. I'm gonna shift D this create like a this is a thick letter. Another shift D, I guess. For this part. Let's bring it in closer, you know. There you go. Beautiful. You'll have to do the same thing up here. Well, not really the same the same thing, but you know, make curves and stuff. Now I'm going to use a circle for the shoulder guard thing here. Just edit it in edit mode. There we go. Now we can do add now we can add some fills. Let's start with the first layer. Add a layer below the line, RBB underscore uniform one dash 
fill. Now, I don't really need to name it as, uh, you know, complicated as that, but... Uh, you know what? You always need to name stuff. So later on, when you have to go back and do edit, do edits, you can easily find them, and not have to go guess which layers are which. But yeah, it's time for some fills. I'm gonna create a new um, spinner garment. So these are spinner garments. Which means uh, they have clothes made from a spider's poop. Is that how it goes? No, that's not how it goes. It's not really spider poop. Maybe uh, light a bluish tint for the spider web. Maybe it just turns yellow the more you use it. Like leaning into a flesh color. Okay then. I'm gonna go fill. And just do that. I need to change the settings for this. Or turn off layers. Because apparently we have the sketch layers turned on. And that shouldn't be the case. That's gonna affect the fill. If the sketch layers are on. But then again you can go to the fill mode here. And set the layers here. Yourself. I could I could set it to that to like only the layer above and the layer above it is the line so that's gonna that's one of the things that could make things easier. But we're not doing that. We're not doing that. We're too lazy to do something like that. <laughs> no, we need to do something that would even make things more complicated for us, <laughs> which will give us <laughs> more things to do later. <laughs> I'm gonna try Control Zing everything. Ah, yep. You cannot close that. So, Control shift z I cannot Control shift z anymore. Gotta be really far to fill only this spot, apparently. And uh, do this and that and that and this. Oh no, what happened? Oh, never mind, it's just, I thought I, because there's it's kind of the same color now, because I made it less opaque, or less visible. So that's gonna say, no, that's, this area is not closed, you stupid. And it's right, it's not closed. Because uh, this is an open thing thanks to this which we now have to remedy by doing something like this uh, awful awful ah, I'm going to have to uh, going to have to do this then use masking But this one's closed. All I, can, all I have to do is draw this part right here. And I'm pretty sure that's already closed. Roughly draw this part right here. I'm using Alt, but I'm not sure if it's working at the moment. There we go. It covers up the arm, of course. Because the whole clothes layers on top of that arm but I have a fix in mind for that just uh wait just a minute here that shall be fixed soon you don't need to worry first I will uh do the fills for everything and then I'll do the masking okay fill this is metal so just going to be like silvery and I'm just gonna go do do it for the belt metal right here belt metal right there also right here 
And then I'm gonna go add a new material for the uh, belt itself. Belt. I'm gonna go fill. The belt's probably a bit black. Leaning into like the dark brown color. Which is also going to be the case for the uh, vest actually. But the vest will be lighter. Yeah, like so, like so. Filling is easier when you do the line arts properly. And I believe we've managed to do that. I'm not sure if I want the upper, the shirt and the legs to be the same though. Guess it's fine, I guess it's fine, I guess it's fine. Being really lazy, which uh, does not bode well for the future of this project. <laughs> Just gonna do something like this. Do that. Also something like this. And do that. This. That. That. This. And this. And that. And that. And this. There we go. Hmm. I don't know. I'm kind of tempted to use a different color for. Tell you what. Let's stick with that for now. I can always change it later. During the 3D modeling, anyway, experiment on the colors and stuff. So now let's add that mask. And one of the things that I think will help us here, maybe, is getting fill, control L. I'm gonna control, I'm gonna shift D, I, I'm, I'm gonna control C. And then object mode, let's go back to regalian ball uniform. I'm going to go draw mode. No, not actually, not draw mode. I'm going to go just do that. And control V. No, no. Control V. There we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use that as a mask. Which I hope is possible. It's not possible if we not make it visible, though. Well, that's gonna be a problem. Supposed to be a mask. How do you make it? I'm pretty sure it's possible to make it so that the mask that you used won't be visible. This is set mask visibility. Hmm. Maybe I could change it to a holdout or something. I'm gonna duplicate this holdout. Is that even possible? Yeah, setting it to like zero alpha will just. I'm going to have to Google this because uh, this is a territory that I haven't. Blender grease pencil. Hide mask layer. Hide mask layer. Hide mask layer. How do you hide the mask layer? for toggle layer visibility in the viewport and in render. Is it possible? Wait, why is that like that? What happened to my lines? Did I hide it? Something really weird's happening here. 
object mode. Let me hide the grease pencil for now. Why is that like that? Why is it like that in the rendered mode? Tell you what, <laughs> I'm not gonna make that my problem right now. I'm gonna make that a problem for my future self because uh, something weird's happening. As you can see, there that's brown for some reason. Why? I'm gonna leave it like that for now. I need to figure out what to do with the Regalian Bond Ball here. Because our masking doesn't seem to want to work. I invert it. Don't set it as a holdout. Okay, then. Hmm, maybe it's... Why does that happen, though? That's weird. What's happening here? Hello? Oh. Really? Is it because I wasn't using the material mode when I was... Filling it up and now it's using the vertex color? Now how do you change that? Draw mode, can I change it to paint mode? Or do I have to do the whole thing all over again? Maybe just select that and assign the skin. Because now the whole darn... Okay. Dang it, blender grease pencil. Switch vertex to material mode. Dang. Stroke. Uh. How do I make it so that it's using the material? Because this is going to affect how it renders. Man, this is ridiculous. Okay, we have come across a bit of a bind here, people. Object mode, make sure that we select Regalian. So how do I switch it so that it uses the material mode instead of The other mode. There's got to be a simpler way to switch this up, otherwise... From vertex to material. Change paint mode from vertex to material. I'm gonna watch a tutorial by Team Miracles here. 
Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use Vertex Color Support in Grease Pencil to make your animations look much cooler. To begin with, let's look at vertices in general. Every Grease Pencil object is made up of vertices, as you can see when you switch to edit mode. The little dots indicate the vertices and this is what we will be affecting when we use the tint brush to color. To do this, you will need a base shape created by a material as usual, like these three shapes here. One is a simple stroke, the second is a closed shape drawn to the fill brush, and the third here is a shape with the stroke that has been filled with the fill tool. Now when I select the tint brush and the color, you can see it only affects the strokes in each of these examples. This is because the tint brush has three different modes, affect stroke, affect fills, and affect strokes and fills. But even when you switch modes, you will see that the fills are affected differently to the strokes. Where the strokes get a gradual, more controlled surface area colored, the fill shapes switch entirely to a new color. So doing it this way will not allow smooth shading, gradients, or any cool effects. This leaves us with one workable option, color everything with a stroke base. So I have this sketch here of a face, and I'm going to be using this as an example animation to explain the rest of what vertex colors can do. So hmm. let's start by coloring it in. Hmm. Well, that's just great, is it? With strokes and a material color. How do I? How about how about Paul Paulo Kagegi? And we loaded an image, and then we went extract palette. Double ear of milky and cocoa. And, and ad, it's fine. I'm gonna support Polo Kagigi by watching the ads. No, I'm gonna skip it the moment that skip button is, uh, appears. Yes, thank you. Sorry, image, Paul. We would then have a reference palette with all of the colors. That particular grease pencil tool has only got a few. Uh, Duplicate. Let's say we do this. Double ear of milky. And oh no! Sorry, Paul. The moment to skip button. Two two ads. One unskippable. Vitally important before an official release. I'm really excited today because this t tutorial has got to do with a new feature in Grease Pencil, and that is vertex with those light. Yeah, I just uh, such as want to take a look at this one, for instance, is to create a bunch of custom materials, each with their own stroke and fill properties and base color. And the advantage of this method is that at any time we could go in and edit that base color and it would automatically show up. What's more, we could probably make a duplicate. Let's say we do this, let's make the skin tone two. I'm going to actually leave skin tone one here because this one is assigned to this color already and I'm going to assign skin tone two here and then change the color. What that means is that skin tone one is still preserved but skin tone two is now being created as this alternate color uh, that we can use. And so materials are still very, very versatile. Yeah, as we How do I change from vertex to material? Materials, just... I'm not sure if he's covering that here, or he probably does, but at 12 minutes. I'm gonna figure that out later, because I'm not it's not the problem right now anyway. My problem is that the mask is not working the way I expect it to work. How do we make it work? Because if I turn off the... If I not make it visible... Then it just doesn't work now, does it? Oh well! I'll figure that out some other time. There's gotta be a way to like hide it though. Because setting the this to alpha yeah I guess I'll set it to hold out pretty sure it's the holdout that's gonna fix this problem 
That holdout just looks like this, it's just which is weird. Do I have to add the uh, fill as well? Yeah, doesn't doesn't work. Doesn't work that way. Or is it really not visible on a rendered view? No, it's still visible here for some reason. Yeah, masking and blender uh, and grease pencil really still confuses me. Here. Because, you know, that just destroys things. It doesn't really mask it out. Because the mask layer is still visible. How do you hide the mask layer? Grease pencil. Hide mask layer. I'm gonna watch some videos here on YouTube of people, and I'm gonna show it here because you know. Hey guys, what is up? My Zig. Back to another grease pencil video, and let's see. Okay, I'm gonna, gonna skip your up. intro, Zig. Sorry. Strength. Then we'll come over here, and then we will draw a little character really quick. Okay. And I uh -huh. see that it is gone, but do not freak out because hey. That's what I'm here for. So what we want to do is we'll come over to the mask layer and then we will invert the mask. And now we can see our character. So it is really make film to mass material, add a fill. We'll make it white and we'll make this white as well. And we're going to come over here to mask and hide it. If you go to do F12, it's going to render the rectangle. So that's the problem. So this is why we want to use mask. Now, if we come back into here and we want to use the mask, we do the same thing with the rectangle, but we do it in the mask layer. Make sure both of these are locked. This is editing, Zach. I forgot to add. Don't forget to put the opacity of the mask layer to zero. You need it um, so that uh, when you draw, you won't see the mask layer. So. Now when we come over here to frame 40, we can actually animate this and it's really cool. Uh, so we'll go come in here to uh, edit mode, cool. And then we'll go over here to draw more about it. Which and now right here on the timeline, masking and greeting to 40. So it'll loop and there you go. That yeah, I don't think that solves our problem. And if I try to render this, Go open that. I'm gonna add. Let's quickly just add stuff here. Let's make this a hundred. So as you can see, the rendered mode. Why? How do I change it? Sorry about this, mates. Tell you what, I'm gonna worry about the color later. I just wanna see if the mask here. Yeah, but if we reduce the opacity of the mask layer. It doesn't work anymore. How do I change it? How do I change? Let's experiment with this one. Grease pencil. I want this to use. A non vertex color. It shouldn't be using the vertex color. How do we do that? How do we g bring it back to. It not using. The vertex color. N 
No, that's not it. No, 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 no. Please pencil paint mode. Draw mode, vertex paint mode. Is there a way to not use vertex paint? Revert it back to... Or are we just really stuck with this and we'll have to redo the whole thing again? Because I am stupid and I set it to... Dang! Now if I do this again... It should use the uh, color now, but yeah. Uh, is there like an easy way to switch it from vertex color to... Because now that uses the vertex color, but... Can we like switch it... Easily? Like switch this from vertex color... To... W... Select Grease Pencil Gotta be easy. There's gotta be an easy way to do this. Toggle caps, switch direction. Simplify, no? Join, move to layer, assign material. How do you change it from vertex to the material that was assigned to it? How? How? Are you just really stuck with a paint the material with a color attribute? Grease pencil paint mode. Switch color attribute to a material. How do I change colors with grease pencil strokes drawn in vertex color paint? Change from raw mode to vertex paint mode to top left. Be able to change the strokes color, but you won't be able to change the color of all strokes at once, like when using a material then editing it. How can I change colors of pencil strokes to in vertex? That doesn't answer anything. There's really not much about it. Like changing from color attribute color to The material. Is that really something that's not easy to change in Blender? Because if that's the case, then that's a big problem. Hey, Jim Animation, uh, I need to change the color. Like, say, like for this. I used the uh, I used uh, if I use the material color, of course we use the material color, and then if we use the color attribute color, I use 
it uses the color attribute color but i want it want to be able to you know change this attribute color into the material color is that possible in blender that's uh what i'm trying to do right now but in in, in the like the whole thing what i'm doing is i'm creating a like a concept like a design for uh, a character's clothing in general but right now i'm trying to figure out how do i switch color attribute into the material color because i accidentally used color attribute on the so now in rendered view they look like that but they look they look i mean the grease pencil looks okay on the uh viewport view They all look the same, but in rendered view, they're using the color attribute colors, which uh, not, not what I want. And I'm trying to figure out how to change the color attribute back to the material color. Yeah, but I don't want to have to man to do it one by one, recolor everything with a with a fill. And you know, repainting everything because it's gotta be like one button where you can just change it from vertex to the material color instead of using the vertex color. And that's what I'm trying to figure out. Change the vertex color to red first, then the tint brush. Really? That just changes the color. And to another vertex color, which is not what I want. I just want to switch it to the material color not copy the color using the vertex color but really not making this use the vertex color make it use the material color and that's not happening the tint brush is under draw mode and that's not going to solve problems because it would still just use the vertex color instead of using the material color here's the tint brush it's in draw mode let's see is this is using the material color right here but this one is using the vertex color. I want it to also use the material color. Point, point. Let's see. It's got to be one button. One button to solve this problem. Otherwise, that's just great. That's just not great. Because even if I assign this material right here on this one, it would still use the vertex color and not use the non-vertex color. Still not working. Oh well. Tell you what. One th way of doing this. If I want to render it using the actual colors and not the vertex color. Is I will have to go and do a viewport render instead of an actual render. Let me just grab the camera. Why can't I grab the camera? Grab the camera, mate. Let's make the camera orthographic. It should 
copyright object data properties. I'm selecting the camera right now. Wait, what's happening here? Object mode, object mode. I'm kind of lost right now. Ah, there. Didn't see it. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to have to do a viewport render image thing. But once again, I can't make the mask work. No, I'm not trying to change it to the vertex color uh, jump animation. I'm trying to change from vertex color. I'm trying to change it back to the material so that it uses the material color. I'm not. I don't want to use the vertex color. I don't want to tint it to a vertex color. That's not what I want. I just want the. I want to use the uh, material color. I want to bring back. You know, I want to. I want to be able to like. You know, take this and whatever this brown parts right here, which is the vertex color, I want that to revert back to the material color. And for some reason, it's so difficult to actually do that. To like switch it back to the material color, which is so weird. It should be easy though. Like you can select everything and then you can just, you know, it's probably going to be in stroke in some, or something. And there's going to be like a button that will make, it will tell you to, uh. That will allow you to Im immediately change. Things. Is that really not a feature that's available yet for Blender? Because that's just great. Because I can't render it now to how to the material mode. It uses the vertex color. <laughs> and vertex color. I guess this is just one of those things that you have to make sure you set properly, otherwise this becomes a problem. But, you know, when you make this mistake, it should also be easy to just switch back to the material color. You can just select all of the strokes in the vertex color. And... Man, that's actually difficult to do. Oh well, standard. What I can do is really just render this in like a uh, viewport render. Oh well, but yeah. Now that we actually cannot figure out how to actually change that back, I'm just going to finish up our clothes design here for Luxa. So I'm going to go and uh, going to have to delete this part right here, actually, because masking doesn't seem to want to work with us. I'm gonna go object mode, go regalian, bond ball uniform. I'm gonna set this back right there. Hard light, add, multiply, divide. Nothing of this works. Does it only work if I render it? It won't show up. But because now I really cannot. Wait, wait, 
Wait. Wait. How did I... Wait a minute. I just copied these. And it uses the material color now. Let's have a bit of an experiment here. I'm going to turn off Regalian uniform for now. Yeah, yeah. Let's go conduct some experiment. I'm going to go... Control. Control. X. I mean, Control C. Control V. Doesn't work, does it? Draw mode. Make sure we're using material. Looks a skin. Yeah, I guess that doesn't work. I thought if you just, you know, delete it. And then control V it back. It will use the material color now, but fortunately it doesn't. I will have to really do the fill again to make it work. Which I will do. I guess I can do it right now. But only for this one. Just so I'll see how it looks on the rendered mode. If I F12 that, yeah, just to really use the vertex color. Not what we want. But oh well. Uh, I'm gonna go object mode again. Let's go to the Realian uniform. And I'm gonna do the not lazy way and not use mask. I'm gonna delete this. Gonna not, not gonna use masks anymore. And I'm just gonna go redo the fill here, actually. Control L. And this time, what I'm gonna do. Is we're going to painstakingly. I'm going to hide the camera. It's obstructing the view now. And the light. And what we're going to do is we're just going to have to add a. A boundary here. That's the best way to do this. Add a boundary right here. And right here for the arms. And fill using spinner garment. And that should, yeah, fill that up right there. And right here as well. No! Closer. There we go. That should uh, kind of solve our problems here, but it's in a janky way. This is an unclosed area, really? Where's the not closed area here? Gonna have to go zoom out a bit. There you go. There you go. Okay. So I'm going to have to stick with that. And then edit some parts right here. Of the fill. Wait, will that be vi Yeah, that's gonna be visible. Let me delete this. Control L. There we go. I guess I'm going to have to go with something like that. So that's like the first layer of the, uh, of Luxus. Clothing for E-02. Now I'm going to go ahead and show the other one. And we're also going to fill that up. Hide this. 
Let's just copy this name right here, control V, and call it Phil. That e that eats that is easier. I'm gonna add another material and call it vest. Surface, not a stroke, but a fill. Light brownish tint to it, but also kind of desaturated. Maybe like that. So now I will go ahead, make sure that we selected the right layer here. And just, you know, fill. This would be easier to fill up than the inner garments because it's not overlapping. Oh, never mind. The other one is going to be <laughs> a challenge. But yeah, we're going to have to go with uh, the longer version because we don't. I don't really want to spend too much time on this because this will only determine like the shape of it, how it looks, uh, the color. That's all I want to see. For this one, I don't need to like, I don't need it to be too detailed because all the detail I will be adding that later on when we turn it into 3D in an experiment on how it will look using procedural textures, etc. Or I could use like an actual letter texture from a free download or something. So just going to very quickly fill this up right here so we can see. There we go. So now, if I turn these things on, we're going to see something like that and it looks great. I'm also going to include this cloth thing. Probably gonna delete some part of the sketch, the uniform sketch here, uniform two sketch, and then go back to the line. I'm gonna draw this. So there's going to be a red team. I guess the way they separate. Each team is by. Oh, wait. This should be tied up to like the belt loop. Then I'm just going to use a curve tool here. There we go. So I'm not going to go and... S I'm going to solve the vertex problem later on. For the render. But, you know, I could just do a viewport render anyway. This is not much of a big deal now. I just wanted to see if the mask is working on the rendered view. Doesn't seem to be working though, which is weird. The mask shouldn't be visible. And yet it is. I mean, I made it work on like previous versions of Blender. But now, doesn't seem to be working. It's so weird. Really find it weird. Maybe it really it just works when you render it. Don't really want to spend too much time on that though, because this is something. Maybe if this has to be like animated and this is the final product, I'd actually spend time solving it. But since it's, and you know, I'm just creating a reference, it's not much of a big deal. I don't want to spend too much time worrying about that or working on that. So I'm just gonna go. Add the creases here. So what will look what team will look to be? Hmm. What if instead of a red and blue team 
God, but then again, white and black. No, they're... Red and blue is probably not that visible. It's going to be white and black team. Like a chess. For the regalians. There's no red and blue team. Just white and black team. I think that's how I want to do it. Let's see. Uh, previous. Turn off sketch for now. So yeah, there's only going to be red and black team, and Luxa will be the white team. So I'm just gonna go cloth, white. So yeah, red and black team for the teams in uh, the Regalian Bond Ball. And they're going to have this like cloth to the side of their dress to indicate which team they are. So I'm just going to go unlock sketch for now. I'm going to get rid of all the sketches for this part. Because I want to use this part. What's that? Wait a minute. Oh crap, never mind, never mind. I did not cancel that order. We haven't inked the sandals yet. Last piece of the puzzle. The sandals. So, yeah. No, I really need to Let's not be lazy. Let's actually line this up. So I'm gonna be... I'm gonna do like a quick... I'm gonna speed run this. Speed running. Speed run the sandal lines and stuff. If that's even possible. Because uh, this is still pretty slow. <laughs> And then I'm going to delete this part right here for the belt. Small belt down here. I only need to do the one side. And then I'm just going to copy it on the for the others for the other side. Except the side V though. Okay, something like that will do. And then, I'm just gonna put this here and here and have this go right there. And then edit it in edit mode. And just shift the it. Scale up a bit, scale on the x-axis. Use edit mode to edit further. Going to have to go control L, shift D, scale, the, scale this down some. And there you go. I'm also gonna do that for the other side. Control L. Actually, Control L. Shift D. X. S Z. Actually, S X. And then I'm gonna delete this. Control Z. You select this part right here and parts there delete that then we can just edit it further in edit mode if 
forgot to add one more important design for this. This needs to be thicker. Guarding the, for the sheen area right there. Or there's going to be like a... Yeah. Something like this. I kind of like the heel area. It's like fully covered there. Gonna move it a bit. Like so. Okay, that's looking nice. I'm probably gonna bring this up. Like so. Probably don't want to put that below right there because that's gonna be really uncomfortable. I will have to put it right on top. That would like cut through your skin. When you're actually wearing this thing. Maybe even go really far and make it like a slipper. Where that side will like go all the way down towards. Inside the toes there. Like so. That would be nice. Let me just select this guys right here. Delete that. Same for here. Just move them around. Go with something like this. Let me just control shift. Shift D that just to add a bit of thickness there. Delete some points right here. That should be great. Now I'm gonna go and draw the metal things that supposed to hold this. Gonna get rid of the smoothing for now. Hmm, so even if it's zero smoothing, there's still quite a bit of smoothing happening there. And for that other side, it just stops right here. It's a weird slipper design but I think it works it looks simple it looks comfortable it's not too complicated it's what I want what they want 
to, to achieve for this. Dang it, mosquito. I will just finish this up. Because we're almost done with Luxus here. Just gonna go shift D, copy that like so. Control L, shift D. Just move it down here. Like so. Now I'm gonna go draw this part right here. Okay. Ah. Uh. Really need to deal with the mosquito. It's drinking all my blood. But yeah, uh, delete points. Pretty sure control plus works here as well. You can just select one point and control plus so that we get to delete all the other points. And then just drag it back like so. Don't forget these one. Probably deleted too many points there, but oh well. Do that. And then these are supposed to be metal. Holding that right there. This is a breaking point right here for this slipper. But we were going to add that level of something there. Because that's a regalian design. And we're keeping it that way. I should use a I should use a tool here. It's going to do something like this. Okay, that looks nice. Shift D X S. Wait, what's happening? Here? S. Oh, are we actually? Oh crap! Never mind. Never d d d delete. Delete. I apparently uh copied everything. We only want the slipper. There we go. Move it right there. 
and there we go. That's a pretty nice, I think, slipper design, I think. Looks like it didn't... Ah, uh, oh well. Not accurate, the other one. <laughs> We're gonna press on as if it is. So I'm just gonna go... Do something like this. Straighten that up. And then shift D. And yeah, like so. And then let's just draw the rest here. For this part. And this part. Stop changing the view, please. Thank you. Then I'm gonna delete the belt area right here. And I'm just gonna try and draw this. I don't have the smoothing turned on now. So this is uh, fun. Have to not forget the rest of the... Uh, maybe make it into a like angular. Something like that. Then I'm going to be using mouse for the rest. Because it's all just curves here. Just going to go do something like this. Control L, Shift D. Scale it up some. And then do something like that. Then another one right here. There we go. That looks nice. Let's go with the other one. Okay. And like so. So I didn't, I didn't copy here. I guess it's fine though. I can just keep going. Let's see if things are good. Something like that. Okay, then. Draw this part. And slowly but surely just really lining putting doing doing lines like right here. So we actually get our slipper. Control L. I'm gonna shift D that. Do something like this. Hmm, 
like this and then there's going to be like a, a a thing that encloses the hill right here should probably use a curve for this to make it you know a bit cleaner and for the back area of that there's going to be another like thing that connects this upper strip right here to the hill Yeah, that's looking great. Definitely doable. Won't be too difficult to, you know, do that. To do something like this in a... In a 3D. Or in real life, actually. You can cosplay this. And that's kind of what I want to achieve for any of my like designs for clothes. If I have to design the clothes of my of the characters that I make. Is that I want to make them so that they are cosplayable. Like you can really make them into a costume. I think that's a good rule of thumb for like designing clothes for your characters. I think not you don't have to do it that way, of course. Because in art, rules are just there for as a guidelines. There you don't really need to follow the rules all the time. Cuz sometimes the greatest artworks are done without even following the the rules. But you do have to follow certain rules in the world that you're making. Like, uh, the, the materials used for their clothing should be made out of this material that can only be found in their world and stuff. That's one of those things. Especially if you don't, it, well, you'd have more freedom if you don't, you know, you don't, like, create a world that's, uh, like, just like our world. Because that, that would just give you more freedom to experiment on how things look and I have to not forget that I added that thing here now this is now like a sleep a slipper like thing I can even go further as to uh I tell you what I'm gonna make changes on the design later on when modeling this in 3D. For now we'll stick with whatever comes out here and then we're we can build upon it. We don't have to strip to strictly follow this all the way. Control L shift D for that second layer below for the thickness. I'm gonna grab all of the points right here in the middle of these guys. And delete. There we go. There we go. So guy I forgot I actually do not I think I heard what the, the terms for like these things are. Like when you if you're a crafter, you probably know what those things are. What they're actually called, like what's the term for it? Okay, we're good there. Control L, Shift D. Do that. 
like so. And I can just draw the rest. So there's definitely still more to be done or you know we can really we can make more changes later on for now this is something we're gonna do should be enough lines for each of those guys so something like that uh what else what else do i include this right here or just stick with that probably just stick with that make this something that will have some kind of secure here for like the uh maybe something like this will work something like that you know or maybe i can even go further and just go with something like this Attaching that all the way to the end. It's going to be something like this. To really just have a sturdy sandal. But yeah, there we go. That's for the sandals. Now let's go fill it up. We're going to be using the vest colors for this. And turn off the uh, sketch for now. Change this to fill. And start filling up. We'll need to make... Why doesn't that go all the way? Why is it suddenly unclosed now? Let's go to the others for now. I will have to draw some parts here. to close that up then just shift do something like this can't seem to fill this up right here oh there we go and just you know fill up the rest of our sandals here there too and right here not even going to make it too in too meticulous about it as per usual. I'm gonna deal with that belt later. Unclosed area right here. Just gonna go do this and that. So this part will be closed areas, should be fine here. There we go. There we go. Like so. And that should be everything except for the metal part, which, uh, you know, we already have the material for it. 
let's just not change the view so you can actually color this thing fill it up and there we go okay then the bottom part okay nice it's kind of looking great starting to really take shape here looks uh looks as uh we're slowly having our luxa character here now this is this designs i have them in my mind for many years now so i kind of just you know i don't have to think too much whether I want to keep them or not because they've been in my head but it's always you know it's always different when you take something from your head and bring it out and draw it into something like an artwork or something so there's definitely changes but yeah Do that. Fill, fill, fill. I'm going to have to just copy this fill later. Oh crap. Control Z, Control Z, Control Z, Control Z, Control Z, Control Z, Control Z. Don't cover up the toes, please, dude. Gonna go really zoom in here. Guess that's not working. How did it make it work before? Oh well. Draw over it. There we go. 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 Getting there, getting there. Can't wait to see how this looks. Entirely. Yeah, I'm gonna be changing stuff off re streaming, but you know, for the most part, this is what I'm gonna be using as a reference. Oh, metal. Don't forget the metal. Metal, metal, metal. There we go. Nice. Now we are going to go and copy this part. SX, SX, negative one. GZ, and let's align that as perfect as we can. Not too perfect, but uh, we're getting there. And there we go. So there's Luxa. And turn off the uh, thing that's covering that. And there we go. There we have it. There we have it. There we have it. I'm gonna bring back this sketch right here because I need that visible. And then I will delete this. Yeah. Mm. 
No, stop that. Why are you doing that? Stop pressing buttons. X-ray. Why did you turn on X-ray? Anyways, yeah. There we go. That's Luxa. Now Henry would probably would most definitely have about the same kind of wear of uh, of clothing. But yeah, this is uh, like a regalian Bond Ball uniform. This is how it would look. And I am loving it. And this clothing right here in, in animation, just having that with cloth physics and stuff, it's going to look great. And also Luke's hair is going to be a pain in the butt. But we're going to... It's, we're gonna be creating an interactive comic, so we don't have to worry about cl cloth, cloth, and hair simulation that much. But I do want to be able to still be able to do that because I'll be making some short animations of Luxa. But yeah, here it is. Here's Luxa, and this is what she's most likely going to end up looking for the final version, for the 3D version of this. So yeah, I think after this, um, I'm gonna be mod. I'm gonna be designing, creating designs for us. Henry next, and then Vicus. But here we have Luxa. See, I'm actually quite satisfied with how this thing turned out. Let me just go and do a render here. Show camera, please. Thank you. I'm gonna go Alt R. No, no, Control. No, yeah, Alt R, Alt G. The camera RX nine zero. Yeah, I'm gonna go zoom it out a bit so we can actually see the characters. This is an orthographic view mode, so it's perfectly two D. In terms of how it looks. So there we go. I'm going to go viewport, render image. And this is our Luxa reference. Probably have to make this bigger though. Make this. I'm going to go with 400% on the rendering here. So that you can really go and zoom in. And not lose details. But yeah, look at this. Luxa reference sheet, model sheet, and also, you know, at the same time, I designed her look and stuff. And for productions like this, where, you know, I'm mostly going to be doing things, I think it's fine to just go with something like that, where you design the character while also creating a model sheet for it. I think that's going to lessen the time it takes for things to be taken. And unless, of course, you're working with a team and you really need to, like, design. A reference or model sheet and then from that maybe create concepts and stuff or really start from concept arts and then create a model sheet from it there's really many different ways to go with like designing a character in this uh industry whether it be game or film as long as it's 3d you know it's they're kind of all the same whether it's film or game or whatever you use 3d assets on it they kind of have the same workflow so you know really depends on what the project needs how you want to do stuff and you know i for this project i think it would just be faster for me to create the model sheet at the same time design them while doing that and we can make changes from that and uh, for now for luke's uh it's kind of looking great this is the luke's uh bond ball uniform look which is what she's going to look like for uh the uh the interactive comic but yeah, there's definitely more we can do once we're 3D modeling this and maybe add more. Planning to create more concept parts of this. But for now, this is it. Um, thank you so much to those who stopped by to Jim Animation for trying to help me out on that uh, grease pencil problem. Uh, that problem was that st we'll still have to find a way to deal with that. The fix for it that I know I can do is to just redo it. Like re 
paint the whole thing on the material mode. But yeah, that's it for now. Yeah, thank you to those who watch. Also, a huge thanks to those who supported me through Kofi, to Carol Green and Paragon, to Jane, Prime Deceiver, Scared Flyer, and Guillermo Gage. Thank you so much, you guys. They supported me through co-free.com slash productions. And yeah, if you want to support me and all of my endeavors, that's the place, best place to do it. I also have a Kofi shop. You can go to that. It's the link. There's a shop there where you can download free 3D assets and other stuff. And yeah, if, even this Luxa model, once I'm done with it, it's, I'm going to be giving it away for free for every fan to just create you know, animated shorts with it if they want to. But yeah, for now, this is it. Thank you so much for everything. Uh, follow Doodle Nose Productions everywhere on the internet. And yeah, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. My name is MJ Vilches. And yeah, I uh, got a project needs to finish. So uh, I'm going to take a quick break though.